George wanted to see how fast the plane would fly using rubber band power plus the wind from the fan. But all Hundley wanted was to do his job and enjoy his balloon. His balloon? He'd let go of the string. George had an idea only a monkey could think of. Ah! <laughs> and he knew just where the man kept his fishing pole. <laughs> Meanwhile, the hot room turned Hundley's worries into a dream. The contestants lined up. And the signal was given to start the race. The leaning tower team was the first to take off. What did we say about claws in the balloon? They landed in Florence, Italy, nine minutes later. Lieutenant Doxy was sure he would win the race. And then he wasn't. Sir, the drive belt snapped. We can't go if the prop don't spin. Whoa. Yes, sir, of course. We can use the belt from an automobile. I'll get one. But then... <laughs> the monkey tightened his rubber band one turn too many. <laughs> this race wasn't over yet. Without propellers, my ship will go wherever the wind blows it. Oh my! Help! Oh no! Chuck Monkey had to help, but his plane couldn't fly. Fortunately, Duxy's ship was still on the ground. I got a belt, sir. Come back! But they couldn't go back because they couldn't control the ship. If they didn't get a belt quickly, they too would blow into the Eiffel Tower. Close <gasps> ah! <laughs> for a belt? What a great idea! Baron in an emergency life balloon, the clever flyers use their ship's propellers to create a wind to blow him back to the landing field. They save the Baron, but they were in last place. Still, no obstacle was too big for Chuck Monkey and Lieutenant Doxy. It wasn't 1909. Huntley wasn't in a race, and his balloon was still stuck. The fan, it sounded a lot like a propeller. And it looked a lot like a propeller. And if it moved air, it would move things that were in the air, right? was exactly what Hundley wanted to hear. Because he had some unfinished business back in 1909. With the aid of a monkey, the Doxy is pulling ahead. Folks, if they win this one, people will be talking about this victory a hundred years from now. Thanks for helping me with the Nature Week exhibit, George. <laughs> We'd like to see the tracks of all the animals that live around here. <laughs> uh, 
the swim mask? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go jump in the lake to conduct the Nature Week fish survey. Bye. <laughs> George wished his photos were more exciting, but there weren't many exciting animals around here. Hey, George. <laughs> what you doing? Wow. I see you've got almost every local animal except that fawn I've seen in the hills. Huh? A fawn is a baby deer. Bet you don't see too many of them in the city, huh? huh? A fawn was just the special, unusual animal George was looking for. Come on, I'll show you where to find it. George still hadn't seen the fawn or learned what its tracks looked like. <gasps> These were the biggest tracks George had seen so far. Something extra large must have left them. They looked like big duck tracks. <laughs> a big duck would make a terrific photo. Ooh, yeah! <laughs> this was like the long track the garter snake made. A giant duck with a snake's tail would make an even better picture. Ah. <laughs> but a huge snake with duck feet would be the most incredible photo of all. <laughs> Maybe it swam back home. George remembered he'd seen big tracks like these. <laughs> in a book. There they were. Dinosaur tracks. A duck-billed dinosaur. <gasps> and the tracks were headed towards Bill's house. <laughs> Hiya, George. Did you see the fawn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess those do look like dinosaur tracks. <laughs> yep, my new boots were hurting my feet, so I put these on to walk to the lake. I told you I was going swimming, remember? Uh-huh. Hey, now I know what it's like to walk in a dinosaur's footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> With no hungry dinosaurs around, George still needed that special photo for Nature Week. <gasps> it sounded like Jumpy was hungry again. But George had enough pictures of that squirrel. <laughs> For such big animals, those deer left pretty small tracks. Hey, deer tracks. Wow, you used fruits and vegetables to lure the deer to our house so you could take photos? <laughs> Look at these wonderful deer. <laughs> How did you manage to capture such amazing photos, George? Oh, you know George, he just used his imagination. Isn't that right? <laughs> There's nothing Hundley loved more than a clean lobby. <laughs> he only wished that monkey felt the same way. Oh, sorry about that, Hunley. Is that all of it? It's not even half of it. Ah, 
301's doorbell is stuck again. Don't worry, Hunley will show you to the basement. Great. George, I'll go upstairs for more boxes. Why don't you and Hunley find a spot for them? Hundley decided to find a place for Georgia's stuff. <laughs> it occurred to Hundley that this was the first time he'd been in the basement by himself. <laughs> now, where did that ball go? <laughs> A good lobby dog is fearless. <laughs> George was right. You should save everything because you never know when you might need it. <laughs> to help pinpoint the noise, George divided the basement into four sections. He recorded the creepy noise in each of the four sections. George played the recording and listened closely. <laughs> now they knew the noise was coming from the part of the basement near the boxes. No, 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 after you. Huh? Hundley had enough. He was tired of being afraid. This is a cow. <laughs> Cow. <laughs> yeah, Mo. Aw, Hunley must be the bravest dog in the city. Woo! Woo! Well, let's get the rest of those boxes down here. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you learned noises are nothing to be afraid of? <gasps> you don't shed the. Maybe we should keep your stuff upstairs, George. You never know when we might need it. <laughs> um, help! Attention! Attention! Help! Ah. Welcome to the incredible edible arboretum, a cornucopia of exotic comestibles. Blueberries are my favorite bush-based fruit. Come on, George. Mm. 
It, it looks like you all forgot the county sprout rules. Uh, rule number one, never eat any plant that you're not 100% certain is safe. And that means... Consulting the edible plants guidebook? Um, no, it means getting an okay from an adult. Right. Rule number two, plants are living things. You can kill or hurt them if you're too rough. So don't pull on them and don't break any branches. <laughs> Come on. Why is the screen flickering? Either the Earth is off its axis, or I forgot to charge the batteries. Okay. George, can you climb that tree and see where we are? <laughs> and Bill... Bill? Bill, where are you going? Don't worry. I've got my handy backup compass. This way, folks! Bill? A, a sprout never leaves the trail. That, 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 that's rule number three. Bill! Oh, our excitement's really growing Cause we don't know where we're going In this direction, green. In this direction, a path. <gasps> George couldn't believe what he was seeing. Someone was trying to break that branch. Somebody was not being a sprout. Oh no, this man was wrecking a tree. Whoa. Hey, are you a monkey? Cool. I always wanted a monkey, but my mother said no. George had to do something, and fast. This tree was in trouble. Hey, return the headgear, monkey. George didn't mean for the hat to get wet. Or the man. But George couldn't wait around. He had to check on that tree. George wished he could think of a way to get the branches back on the tree. He needed something sticky. Really sticky. Like... Mud. George! Oh, thank goodness I found you! Sorry, I left you in that tree. <laughs> oh, Dr. Greenbean, nice to see you. <laughs> Sorry we're late. We've had a rough day. Tell me about it. First this monkey ran off with my hat, and now my tree lopper has vanished. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> What's going on? Who put mud on this? Uh, George? <laughs> ah, so Dr. Greenbean was cutting some branches and you thought he was hurting the tree. Ah, uh -huh. oh, you should have asked. Oh, wait, <laughs> you're a monkey. Well, anyway, this is called pruning. You make a careful cut, and it doesn't hurt the tree at all. Hey, I got it! Uh, Mr. Sproutmaster? According to this, you're going the exact wrong... Wait, you're going the right way! Never mind, proceed! Ta-da! George wondered, who were these incredible fruit balancers? Zucchinis! <laughs> Piscetti! Giorgio, these are my friends, the famous zucchinis. <laughs> we can buy to order food for our rehearsal. Our show is tonight. 
But now, all he wanted was to be an amazing balancing zucchini. Want to deliver this to the zucchinis for me? <laughs> Aha. Maybe you like to see them again because you want to be a zucchini, eh? Uh huh. Ah. which gives us the strength to perform our amazing feats! <laughs> I think he wants to join us. <laughs> it's not that easy. It takes lots of practice to do things like us. Balance requires total control. Uh, 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 I never sneeze unless uh, yeah? a cat. Yeah. Uh, uh. Leo's allergic to cat hair, and sneezing is very bad for his balance. It would wreck our show. <laughs> George was proud to be a starter zucchini. He gave out every flyer. And that night, everyone he knew came to the show. Everyone. Gnocchi just wanted to watch. She found a quiet place where she couldn't possibly bother anyone. Okay, just relax, Chef. We'll do everything. This is like a dream come true. Gnocchi <laughs> ran to Chef Biscetti whenever she saw him. So why should now be any different? Is that a, uh, uh... Oh, it's Gnocchi. Leo, don't sneeze. I, I can't, can't, can't help it. Gnocchi, go with Giorgio. <laughs> this was just like that mop. So George shifted his hands. George was all day, practicing to be in the show. <gasps> we made it! After a sneeze break, the show went on and was a great success. And when it was over, of their great balance, we voted to make George and Chef Piscetti official zucchinis. Oh! <laughs> and you're welcome to practice with us anytime. So that was all real? Oh, I'm glad I didn't know. I, I would have worried. Ah, nothing to worry about. George is a natural. <laughs> <laughs> But maybe he should stick to the high wire. George thought the country house was a great little place. But he wondered, what would it be like to have a great big place? Like a country castle. George, look what I found. My old photo album. Oh, 
That boy? That's me. <laughs> uh, anyway, this got me thinking. I haven't been to the beach in a long time. You want to go? We can build sand castles. <laughs> well, I don't know if we could build a sand castle quite that nice, but that can't stop us from trying. <laughs> Um, George? I take it this means you'd like to go to the beach. <laughs> George hadn't planned on having so much room to build a castle. <laughs> With this kind of space, he could really think big. George, wait up! Let me know when you find a good idea for a castle. He wouldn't build just any old ordinary little sand castle. George said he built his sand castle around here somewhere. <gasps> wow! Could this be George's sand castle? Anyone home? <laughs> George? It's me! <laughs> George, it's the greatest sand castle any monkey ever made ever anywhere! All right. Once you get good, wet packing sand, carry it away from the water so the waves can't wipe out your work. That's a pretty good job, boys. <laughs> and Ma Rabbit won't burrow through it because she has her own doorway. Well, time to pack up. Uh, George, put anything wet or sandy in the trunk for the trip home. It was a great little castle, but George wasn't going to give up on his dream of having a great big castle. Even if it took all summer, he would keep looking for just the right place to build his castle. And when he found that perfect spot, he wanted to be prepared. <laughs> 